Have you ever thought that the piano was a hard instrument to play or it's just too many notes to remember? Well, I'm here to save the day. This is a series of lessons that we're gonna to do to break down the myth that the piano is hard. And we're gonna do this through a series of lessons. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell. Trust me, you don't wanna miss out on this. This is gonna change your life. So this is lesson one and what we're gonna do is talk about the notes of the piano and how to identify them. Then in lesson two, what we're gonna talk about is distances, the distance between notes. In lesson three, in the future, what we're gonna cover is major scales, how to form major scales and identify them for every key. And then in lesson four, we're gonna talk about major and minor chords. In lesson five, we're gonna talk about basic chord progressions. Then in lesson six, what we're gonna do is talk about finding the key to any song, which is very important when it comes down to just playing anything that you hear by ear. And then in lesson seven, we're gonna talk about how to follow the bass to determine the song's chord pattern. Now, depending on what type of keyboard you have, some keyboards have 61 keys, now, some have 76, others even have 88. That's when you're getting into the weighted keyboards and those are similar to like baby grands and upright pianos. But all in all, at first glance, all of these notes can look very intimidating. And don't get me wrong, it seems like a lot, but in actuality, there are only 12 unique notes that we recognize in Western music. And these notes repeat themselves all throughout the piano, but what makes them different is the level of highness. Or lowness. Of the pitch. For example, this note is considered to be C. And I'll show you why, I'll show you how to recognize the notes in a second. But notice, it's a low pitch C. And then if I come and play the same note up here, listen, it sounds exactly the same, but a little bit higher. If I come here, it sounds exactly the same, but a little bit higher. Same note, a little bit higher, so forth and so on. Now I'll take another note, which is considered to be F. This is an F, and listen to the pitch of this tone. It sounds exactly the same, but the note, is getting higher and higher. So that's what I mean by the notes repeating themselves, but the pitch changing and whether it's higher or lower. Now, if I took you back to your childhood, let's say kindergarten, one of the first things that you learned in kindergarten was the alphabet, your ABCs. And you still know them, right? Bruh. All right, I hope so. Well, on the piano, we use something called the musical alphabet. And it uses the first seven notes of the same alphabet that you learned in school. So what are the first seven notes of the alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So on the piano, these notes fall on the white keys and they're also known as naturals. But how do you find them? Well, I'm gonna give you a couple shortcuts to make it easier for you. Let's get into it. So if you look at your piano or keyboard, one thing that you're gonna notice is a pattern that happens with the black keys. And it's two sets of black keys, then it's three sets of black keys. And it repeats, two sets of black keys, then three sets of black keys, over and over and over, two, three, two, three, two, three. And if you wanna remember this, you can think about one of the greatest basketball players of all time, Michael Jordan. Some would say that it's LeBron James, I don't know. It's up to you. Michael Jordan or LeBron James better? Who are you going with? Well, I'm going to go with Michael Jordan. Okay. But statistically, oh. LeBron James is a better basketball player. Uh, just remember the number, 23. So two sets of black keys, three sets of black keys. Now, why is that important? Well, because on the left side of the two black keys, you're, gonna, you're always going to find the note C. And then on the left side of the three black keys, you're always gonna find the note F. So all you gotta remember is C is on the left of the two black keys, and then F is on the left of the three black keys. So all you gotta do is say that over. Two, C is on the left of the two black keys, F is on the left of the three black keys. C is on the left of the two black keys, F is on the left of the three black keys. C is on the left of the two black keys, F is on the left of the three black keys. So you can practice finding all the C's. So this is C, this is C, 
This is C on the left of the two black keys. This is C, this is C. Now let's find some Fs. This is F on the left of the three black keys. This is F, this is F, this is F. Now, that's the starting point. So if you know your alphabet, just keep going up the alphabet. So if you see C and you know how to identify that, what's the next notes or what's the next letters of the alphabet? C, then D, then E, and then what's next? F. And we already found a shortcut to find the F right here. And then G. Now, there's one thing that happens. Once you get to G, that's when it starts all over, to A. So it goes C, D, E, F, G, and then A, then B, then C. So you can think about um, C is the equivalent to what A is for the alphabet. So in the alphabet, you start with the letter A, right? But on the piano, C is kind of the starting point, and you start with C. So C is the middle point of the piano, which splits the whole piano in half. And this is considered to be middle C. So you will say C, because once you find the two black keys, you say C, then D, then E, then F, then after G. Remember, after G, A is the next note. The alphabet starts all over. A, B, C. So one shortcut would be to say F, G, A. Um, what can you say for F, G, A? Uh, I don't know. Food is good always or um, forever. God's amazing. Uh, whatever you can think of to remember F to G and then after F to G is A, right? So those are some shortcuts. Even if you start with finding the three black keys and start with F. Right? Because you know how to find it because it's on the left of the three black keys. If you say F, then G, and then we're starting all over with the alphabet. Then it's A, B, C, D, E, and then we're back at F, G, A, B, C. So those are the white keys, and the quickest way to do it is to find the, either the C or the F and then identify everything else from there using those starting points. So now that you know the white notes of the piano, the next step will be how to memorize them and how to practice this so it can be further implanted into your memory without you having to think, okay, where's F, where's G? So the key thing to do is repetition, right? I always recommend repetition over time. And what that means is I would much rather say I'm gonna practice a certain amount of repetitions of something rather than saying I'm gonna practice a certain amount of time. Because if you look at it from a time standpoint, it's kind of hard to track how much you've done. But if you track actual repetitions, then it's easier to see how much work you've put in. So one thing that you could do is practice from C to C or F to F by first identifying every C or every F or wh whichever point of the piano you want to work on. So you can start down here and say, okay, find C and then say C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And that's also the C major scale, by the way, but we're gonna get into that in a further lesson along the lines, all right? So that's one way to do it, and you can switch. That's one repetition. Then you can also say, okay, I'm gonna find the F, and go from F to F. So you can come up here and say, F is on the left of the three black keys, and say F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. That's two repetitions, okay? So from C to C, that can be considered one repetition. From F to F, that's another repetition. And you can alternate or go C to C, C to C. But you can say, okay, I'm gonna do 10 repetitions all together of just identifying the notes. So throughout the day, you kind of know how much work you put in. You can say, for this whole day, I wanna do 30 repetitions, but break them up. 10, 10, 10, and that way you can practice and in no time, trust me, you're gonna know all the white keys. So that's the white keys. Now, what about the black keys? Well, we already established that there's two sets of black keys, then there's three sets of black keys, and there's a pattern that happens. Two, three, two, three, two, three. And this happens all the way up and down the piano, and you can remember Michael Jordan's number or LeBron James' number. 
Bruh. I don't understand how they don't have a debate when it comes to COVID. That's like, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, what you, you forgot or something? What they forgot? <laughs> <laughs> but the black keys are derived from what we call pitch modification of the white notes or the white keys. And pitch modifications are represented by two symbols, flats and sharps. And you can think about a flat as a lowercase b and the sharp as a hashtag symbol or a pound sign, right? And sharps, which is the pound sign, you can think of a sharp as going up the stairs, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then a flat, you can think about as going down the stairs. Oh. He needs some milk! Right? So sharps go up, flats go down the stairs. So with pitch modification, if you take a C and you make it C sharp, that would mean you would take the note and go up a half step to the right or go up the stairs and that would make it C sharp, okay? So if we take C and we pitch modify C and go up a half step, then we're going up the stairs and we're going up to C sharp, right? Now this note can also be looked at as a flat. And if we pitch modify the D and go down, we're flatting the D. And this would mean this note can also be looked at as D flat, okay? So remember, going up, going up to the right, that's a sharp, and going down to the left, that's considered a flat. So all of these black keys can be looked at as two different things, either a sharp or a flat, but it all depends on how you pitch modify it based upon the white note that you're looking at or the white key that you're looking at. So if we take F, and we make it F sharp, that means we're gonna go up the stairs. So this note can be considered F sharp, but it also can be known as G flat, okay? Let's do another one. If we take A and we sharp it, which means we're going up the stairs, then this note right here, this black key can be looked at as A sharp. It can also be known as B flat, okay? So that's one way to do it. Um, and then once if once you get this down, you can just start to practice all the flats and all the sharps. So you can say C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, and we're going up the stairs. G sharp, A sharp, right? So this is C sharp, this is D sharp, this is F sharp, this is G sharp, and this is A sharp. Now that depends on if you want to name the note as a sharp. Now let's say you want to name the note as a flat. Then you would say D flat, E flat. And we're taking that D and pitch modifying it and flatting it, which means we're going down the stairs. So that means we're going down. And it's weird to say down the stairs because it's like we're going up. But when I say go down, that means we're going to the left, okay? All right, so that can be confusing. But D flat and then E flat and then G flat and then A flat and then B flat so this is D flat this is E flat this is G flat this is A flat and this is B flat and these black keys can be looked at like I said using pitch modification it could be either looked at as a sharp or a flat all right y'all so that's it for this lesson thanks for tuning in uh, this is lesson one where we talked about the notes of the piano. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, the notification bell because we got more lessons coming up. In fact, the next one that we got is talking about distance and half steps and whole steps and further understanding that. So you don't want to miss out on all of this great content and we're going to make it easy for you to understand. All right. God bless. Until next time, remember, if you can hear it, you can play it.